what you see here is programs that calculate. First we have the layout with all the names. Here are the two things to do. Create the interface, set the properties, and you might remember, write the code. First thing to do, save your project. I recommend saving it in your G drive. In this case I put it on the desktop to speed things up. Laying out the form. Make sure you have enough space to work with. I increased the size of my form so that I had lots and lots of space to work with. First thing to do, make sure that you change the name of the form, and please don't confuse this with the caption of the form. The caption changes what is displayed in the window. Programs that calculate, PP1. And I recommend that you change the font for the form right away so that any changes you make apply to the entire program. In this case, I set the font size to 12. First, create the three frames. Make sure that the caption for the frame makes sense. Some of you were choosing to use labels. In this case, please make sure you are changing the caption for the frame and make sure the font size makes sense. Place the various objects, so labels, text boxes, buttons, more labels. We start by placing the labels. And changing the caption. Please notice that you do not need to change the name for the labels because these labels are not used in the program itself for the code portion. I like to align the labels so that they look neat. Place the text boxes. And again, clear the text property and make sure that everything is aligned. In this case, I chose to recreate the text boxes so that they would have a consistent height because when you draw them, uh, the height is inconsistent. So I copied and pasted. Please remember not to create control arrays. If you click yes, it causes you additional headaches. So once again, I like to align my objects. The last thing you click, by the way, is the object that is used to align everything else. It's the object against which other things are aligned. So in this case, Make sure you change the name because that's what you do refer to in the code. TXT length, TXT width, and make sure that you clear the text property. What I am doing is double clicking on the icon to create the object and that way I ensure a consistent height. Here I'm checking out the layout for programs that calculate, reminding myself of the labels and the names of the objects. So in this case calculate area is the caption. You'll notice that I forgot what calculate area was so I tried this a few times. I've got the hotkey in the right place. Remember, to activate hotkeys, use the Alt key. Place the label, give it a correct name, because we do refer to it in code. And you'll notice that I didn't change the caption for that particular label. And only at the very end of the program will I remember to change the caption. Now create the event procedure. Oops, I made a mistake. I did not name this particular command button. Going back to the layout, double checking what the property is supposed to be called. I forgot to set the property. I forgot to name this control. 
CMD, Calculate Area. Double click. Now I have the correct event procedure stub. Writing the code, I put in my comments and to delineate the areas. So dim length as single, width as single, area as single, they're all numerics. And then message as a string. Next section has the inputs. So to automatically complete names, you use control and space. So control space allows you to auto-complete. So length, width, remember to include the val function to convert string to text. Our processing requires us to calculate the area, length times width. And here I am trying to remember what the exact message was. So the area of the parking lot is hmm, square meters. The area of the parking lot is hmm, and notice how I put a space inside my string to ensure that there is a space in the output. Ampersand, that's the AND key, SHIFT 7. Convert my area to a string and finish off with square meters with a period. Last but not least, the output. And this is where I place my message. Please notice that all my variable names have a capital letter as the first letter. They all begin with capital letters. Remember to save frequently. After having created the first program, Area of a Parking Lot, let's recap. So remember, create the interface, set the properties, and last will be to write the code. Here's a reminder of what frames are all about. We do have to remember all the names of the controls that we would like. So write the code. Here I have the event procedure for the Addition button and we'll go through that in a little bit, but here's the brief summary of it. Add the extra frames, paying attention to the text boxes, labels, and command buttons. So here we, I am creating the text boxes and the labels, aligning them all, aligning tops, aligning lefts, and you'll also notice at some point that I write a line. So here we're naming them TXT price, TXT quantity, placing the command button, making sure it's appropriately sized, called command cash out, placing the labels for subtotal HST and total, aligning them and spreading them out placing the text boxes, realizing that I hadn't left enough space, aligning those, and spreading out the labels again vertically so that they all line up nicely with the text boxes. And these are the subtotal, the tax, and the total. And you may have noticed that I right aligned my labels I updated the captions. Now for the text boxes to give them correct names and to empty the text property. Create the event procedure for cash out. Oops, I should not have used text boxes. I should have used labels. So even someone who's perfect like me makes mistakes. Does that make me any less perfect? An interesting existential question.
make name all the labels lbl subtotal lbl htst lbl total and clear their contents now to create the code so write the code command cache out is the event procedure and you'll notice i created the four parts of my program declarations input processing and output so we have price we have quantity we have a subtotal tax and total by the way sometimes i would be inclined to name the hst variable tax rather than hst i have not introduced you to constants yet but once i do it would make more sense to have that as a tax variable and make hst a constant here we create the processing and you'll see yet another mistake oops so these three lines are the processing lines they must occur after input i did not have any input yet by the way this is what happens when you try to avoid drinking coffee in the morning input using the val function i have already created my processing i need to create my message and in this case it doesn't look like i need a message so let's skip message this time we don't need the message variable and we go straight into output we have our dollar sign ampersand subtotal You'll notice that I'm skipping the use of str$ that is on purpose. str$ adds a space before the number if it is positive and I don't like that. So let's test the program. Seems to be working. Let's test the area of the parking lot. That seems to be working too. I don't like all these random decimals, so let's take care of that. There's a function called format dollar sign. And if you apply it to a variable like subtotal and you specify what you'd like to see in quotation marks, you can format any number to any format that you desire. There you go, consistently two decimal places. And like I write there, it is indeed the advanced version of str$. It is, I guess in a way, a form of type casting. We will be using format dollar sign in the future, rather than str$. Here I'm just making the widths of the frames exactly the same, copying two buttons and two text boxes, and answering no to the question that asks, do you want to create a control array? No, you do not. If you do, it causes you headaches. It means that you'll have situations where you cannot access uh, an object. Uh, what you need to do in that case, and it's very important that you listen, is to go to all of your objects and remove the index property. So if you look down the list, you'll notice that there's an index property. Make sure that it is empty. Not zero, but empty. So you press the backspace key to get rid of any number that is in index. Do that for every single object, and that will most likely fix your problems. And at this point, the rest of the video is adding code. I invite you to watch it. I will not narrate it unless you wish to have uh, 
Japanese pop as the uh, background music. Now, I'm not entirely sure. Is this Japanese or Korean? I'm sure you can tell me. <laughs> 